What's going on guys, Victor here. You guys liked James in the video so much last time with the Iguana Catch Clean Cook. He's back again. What's up guys? So um, we're out here and actually a subscriber hit me up. He felt my frustration with the puffers. He's like, dude, you gotta try the spot. So we're at his spot. He should be here any second and the puffers are loaded here. So this is what we're gonna do. I got a little water bottle right here. And a couple people have told me a good way to kind of get them congregated and to load up. Just take a water bottle, poke some holes in it, poke some holes in here. There we go. So we're going to stuff this with shrimp. You don't want the puffer fish to get full on the chum. You just kind of want them to get it congregated around it and that way we can sight fish them. And uh, yeah, so let's stuff this thing with shrimp. Here's a little pro tip for you too. Not to knock on my local tackle shops. I got a lot of love for you guys, but when it comes to shrimp, you can't beat Wally World. Walmart shrimp is like five bucks and it's way better quality than what you're gonna get in the tackle shop. That's your pro tip of the week. That is. Some scrimps. Puffer fish aren't really picky. They pretty much eat everything. Uh, you see them a lot at fillet tables, except when you're trying to film a catch and cook, you don't see any. It's the story of my life. But we're gonna stuff this guy with shrimp. Get that scent trail going. Oh my gosh, look, there's a puffer fish right there, bro. I'm just loaded right here. Oh my gosh, this is puffer heaven. See all that? As soon as I put the shrimp in the water, all that little juices and bits of shrimp are just flowing out of there. We're just gonna let that kind of just chill. Okay, we've literally been here a minute. Already a puffer fish right here by the water bottle. Came right up to it. So James just tossed a little piece of shrimp in. Look, he's on it. Oh, sucked it in. <laughs> it's as easy as that with the power hook set too. That's it. Right there. All right, you guys are about to see something really funny. Well, that wouldn't be funny, but okay, watch him blow up. You're gonna tickle his stomach. Yep, you give him a little massage. So, this is their defense mechanism little puffer fish, also known as a toady. I'm gonna show you guys something really neat with these fish in a second here. All right, this video would not be possible without this guy right here. What's up, man? Tyler slid into the DMs and he's like, hey man, I heard you've been having a tough time getting the puffer fish, which is something to be embarrassed about, frankly. And um, his buddy Jacob's right there too. You got the puffer fish spot down. Dude, uh, <laughs> this is like the world's best puffer fish spot. And look at this. He's been going around the bank and you've been cast netting him, right? Yeah, just probably like four throws. Four throws. Yeah. Got us six puffers. They're all around the same size. And then me and James have been catching them hook and line in here. And we probably already have what, like 15? At least. It was like bang, bang, bang. And we haven't moved from this spot. No. <laughs> There's a whole, whole lake looking over here. This, all this public spot is this entire seawall and bank swirls around. And we've literally, we're parked like right over there. And we've just been here. There's so many puffer fish here. It's unbelievable. This is something special to fish for because you can take your kids your wife if you're introducing someone on how to fish puffer fish fishing is really easy i used to do it as a kid and i was like i'm never gonna eat this thing and all you need any rod or reel just really light line so i'm fishing 20 pound floral leader unnecessary you could use six pound test whatever just a light enough line and then the hook doesn't really matter either the important thing is, is that it's small you want like a size two to a size eight these are all mustad hooks something with a relatively long shank. Because you guys are gonna see, we burn through a lot of hooks, puffer fish fishing, because they have these gnarly little, little teeth, which you're gonna see in a second here. So something with a longer shank and something small. Bait, honestly, shrimp is perfect. It's nice and soft, but anything will work if you have little scraps of something. Puffer fish are not picky whatsoever. Take a look in there. There's gotta be at least 20 puffers in there already. So you get a little piece of shrimp just like this, okay? We hook it. Come over here to the water's edge. Watch how easy this is. There's our water bottle, and those puffers are just congregating around it. Now watch this. Oh, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. Oh, they saw us. Oh, there he is. Slurped it, see? Done. Just like that, bam. It's as easy as that. Now, when you go to unhook these things, you need to be careful because watch this. So their first instinct is to puff up. That's why they're called puffer fish. Some people call them toadfish. So when a predator tries to eat them, 
he's gonna puff up like this and it makes whatever's trying to eat him um, almost impossible to eat because he's all puffed up. You know, it, it clogs their throat. Get a load of these teeth right there. Look at that. They have human-like teeth. I've been bit when I was little. They will draw blood. They will pierce your skin. I've seen people get stitches by them. They are no joke. Just be very careful when unhooking them. And this is why I say you burn through a lot of hooks because they can easily, 20 pound fluorocarbon, cut it like nothing. They don't have sharp teeth, but they have very strong jaws. And um, you do not want to get bit by them. They really are like human teeth. So make sure you got a good pack of hooks because you are going to be burning through some hooks. So we're going to do it once more, once again. A little piece of shrimp, toss it in. And the cool thing about this is it's all visual. So if you take your kids or whatever, they're actually going to be able to see the fish eating it, which I think is pretty neat. It's very, oh, he slurped it. Got him. That easy, that easy. And it's like Tyler was saying, it's a good thing that it's sunny out because it's kind of hard to do. Look at how much this one puffed up. Like I, you can't squeeze them. So um, it's nice when it's sunny out. If it's rough or really murky or cloudy, it'd be harder to do. It's important to be able to really see them. Very slimy too. If you ever wanted to put one in your fish tank, they got those green and orange eyeballs in that checkered pattern. They really are a neat little fish. And I've never eaten one, but um, James has a childhood favorite of his, right? Yeah, it passed on for me. Tyler, thank you so much, bro. No problem, my brother. Thank you, Anytime, thank you. Man. Hey, this is what I love about the fishing industry. Never met before, came here leaving his friends. And you know, without him, like I said, this video wouldn't be possible. Jacob, I think Jacob caught the most puffers out of anyone. Oh, I'm yeah. not even kidding. He's getting the fatties. Yeah, them <laughs> lunkers, I'm telling you. Yeah. I know I get a lot of DMs and if I can't get back to everyone, I appreciate you guys reaching out, but I like doing stuff like this and I think we could do it more and more. So if you guys have something unique, as simple or as stupid as a puffer fish, this is gonna be one of my favorite videos, just tackling this little guy and everyone who cooks them says they're good. So I'll see you guys at the flay tip. We just cleaned. This is 56 puffer fish. So if you guys wondered what the yield on 56 puffer fish is, it's actually quite a lot. And the little ones, you know, we were kind of like wondering, should we keep the little ones? Like this is, this is a little guy. They get much bigger than this, but you'd be surprised. They got quite a bit of meat on them. And you know, the spot that we fished, it was so cool. Seriously, once again, Tyler, thank you, dude. It was that giant circle. And apparently there's two of them you guys are watching the drone footage right now. If you guys think we're greedy about taking puffer fish, first of all, almost no one takes them. They're unregulated, so you guys can keep 100 pounds or two fish per person, whichever is greater. Puffer fish are known to be poisonous. I'm not an expert. I'll post the best of my knowledge in the description box below. And what I'm showing you guys, this is just a suggestion. This is how we cleaned it. I don't know if it's safe or not, but this is what I've seen online. First thing you're gonna need to do, get any knife, really doesn't matter. Kind of something with a stiff blade is preferable though. So let's say like this six inch um, curved Dexter. You're gonna feel right here behind the head. And there's kind of like a little bump. I'm gonna go right behind that bump and it helps to put a little towel there. And I'm not gonna go all the way through the backbone, just like slightly until I can kind of feel it crunch. I'm gonna flip them around and um, so there is the guts and stuff that you want to try to avoid. You don't want to puncture any of that. Now what you do is you can either take pliers. I found a fork to be the best thing. Your normal kitchen fork. You're going to go right here into the backbone, press down, take your left hand on the puffer fish's head and just pull out. And all of the bad stuff comes out. There's the puffer fish head. There's the guts. It's supposedly that the liver and, and the green stuff, that's what you want to avoid. Apparently it's really poisonous. I don't know if this species is as poisonous as other ones, as other ones, but come take a look at this. You guys know Brooks Canal is loaded with catfish and I don't see him hardly turn down anything. They were tearing up the iguana the other day. Watch this. I'm gonna toss it right there. They're very skittish, very skittish of the puffer fish. There's gotta be 40 catfish down there right now. They know, they know what's up. I don't know if they can smell the toxin in there or I don't know if they just naturally see the checkered pattern of the puffer fish and they think, oh boy, I gotta stay away from this guy. But it's it's kind of interesting, you know? 
it kind of puts into perspective of what we're about to eat. If they, with a brain this big, we got these big old brains and we're about to eat something potentially poisonous. So this is what you end up with. Puffer fish, also known as a toady. There's just one little backbone in there and that's your yield. You know, there's a decent amount on there. Just go right behind that bump. It's basically like in line with the pectoral fins. Go down and you can kind of hear that backbone break a little bit. Fold them down like that. You're gonna start to see the skin wanna peel away. Take your fork into the backbone right there and push down. Sometimes it gets away from you. Push down on the backbone and then just pull away. And it all comes out. And you just repeat that 50 times and you're good to go. But like I said, I'll have all the, like the, the legal stuff and the poisonous information linked in the description box below. We got James back in the kitchen and just like last time, following on Instagram because he absolutely killed it last time. The last video I posted was the snakehead and iguanas. I'll have his Instagram posted up here. And a lot of people actually asked where you're a chef at. So you want to tell us? So uh, downtown West Palm Beach, I'm a chef at uh, Sassafras. It's a newer restaurant. It's uh, kind of like high end Southern. And uh, we kind of just play around there. It's open kitchen. So you can kind of see me there working and doing my thing. So uh, whenever we're back open, please come by. And I'll have that link below. So uh, what's on the menu tonight? Puffer fish that you guys saw previously in the video. We're going to do it two ways. We're going to do like a traditional fry. And then we're gonna do like a little cornmeal for a little country flavor. A little pea puree on the bottom, a little peach and grain salad, and some little foofy stuff on top to make it look great. You know how that goes. And we got some wild rice, or royal blend rice. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yep, it's gonna look nice on that plate. It's gonna give it like a nice pop. That is just like super light with peaches. You know, peaches are in season right now. It'll go good with the Fresno chili and some of the pickle stuff we're gonna put on top too. It's all gonna really, really blend really well together. We're just adding, we're doing kind of similar to what I did with the iguana, mostly cornstarch. We're gonna add a little bit of flour to it, probably just like a cup. Whatever blackening season you wanna use, we just wanted that because it has like a nice peppery flavor. I'm gonna double bread this essentially. So I'm gonna bread the fish in this first, let it sit, kind of absorb some of that cornstarch and flour. And then I'm gonna bread them again right before they go in the fryer. And we're just using this stuff right here. This is a pre made Cajun seasoning right here. Which is basically, isn't Cajun black and all just like paprika, garlic powder, cayenne? Exactly. We, Victor and I are gonna make our own one day. So this is, uh, this will do for now. You know what I mean? This is like, uh -huh. you know, we're, we, if we were to take the ingredients in this and throw it together, it would be the same thing anyway. So we might as well, you know, make it a little easier, make it a little home friendly, you know? It's just like something like quick you can do at home. It's just a quick pickle. It's just apple cider vinegar, a little bit of water, a little bit of salt, and brown sugar. And that's about it. You let it just come to a boil, pour whatever kind of veg. Like these are Fresno chilies. And just let it sit on there for a little bit hot. Okay, I have a question for the chef. What's up? I am someone who likes to cut the leaves and the stems. As an actual chef, what's the uh... Really, I would recommend using the stems because the stems have a lot of flavor in them. And I'm sure you've said that before in your past videos, they have a lot of flavor. And Don't I Don't look at me! And I highly recommend if you're gonna make like some form of sauce or they're gonna get tossed in something, there's nothing wrong with a little stem in there. As long as you don't get like any of that chunky stuff, it just adds flavor. Did we mention that this came from my garden? No. Well, you just did. <laughs> we got our nice fresh herbs from my garden today. Parsley, mint. Curly parsley, flat leaf parsley, and mint. Right. Oh, look at you, fancy man. Look at I that. Gotta, I gotta do that for you now. I saw that in slow motion before and I was like, whoa. Oh, look at that. That's so cool. That was in regular motion, but you still did good. So these are just gonna go straight from we gave them a nice little rinse, seasoned them with the same blackening seasoning that we were put that we put in the seasoned flour and cornstarch. Same thing as we did before. Just put a couple in there, bread them up nice, let that uh, let that cornstarch and flour like seal nice to these things, and then they're gonna sit. And then right before we fry them again, we're gonna dredge them in this flour and cornstarch mm -hmm. one more time. Got some fresh peas. You want to get a uh, nice boiling water going. You give them a quick blanch, and blanching is just putting a vegetable in boiling water. It gives it a nice bright green color. Obviously this one's gonna turn into a puree so you can let them go a little bit longer than normal. Boiling water, no seasoning, and then you wanna have right in the sink some kind of strainer with a little bit of ice just to completely, when you dump the peas in there, just stop that cooking process. I had some marinating in uh, buttermilk, just a little, little salt and pepper in there. Really, really straightforward. Buttermilk kind of has that like kind of rich niceness, that nice flavor anyway. Right from the buttermilk into your cornmeal, give it a little toss. Make sure it binds well to it. Make sure you got it cover right there. It should look like that. Nice crispy goodness. So now we're just making the puree right here. 
you're gonna finish, you usually wanna finish with herbs, especially if it's something that's green like that, because right when it hits that heat, it's gonna get it nice and bright instead of like turning brown on you. Brooke has really, really nice herbs in the backyard, so I grabbed some mint, peas and mint, and a puree, kinda works out perfect, so, worked out in my favor. See how they kind of, it kind of gets a little, see that color? Mm -hmm. That's that's the that's the cornstarch kind of like saturating into the fish. Just gonna toss it one more time in there. Give it another nice coating so it's gonna be nice and crispy. And then we're ready to go in the fryer. They're gonna be swimming again in a couple minutes. Before you move on, if you guys are liking these videos, liking people like James and Tyler coming on the channel, smash that like button. Cause I love, I love bringing people on, on the channel cause it wouldn't exist without you guys. It's all about the community. And the more and more I do this, the more I realize it. And there's so much opportunity to do cool things. So if you guys have a cool fishery, like I said, reach out, whether it's on Instagram at Landshark Outdoors, shoot me an email, Facebook. I'll have all that stuff linked below. And James reached out and look at us. Second video we're filming right now. Once again, cooking on the Camp Chef, not stinking up the house on the side burner. And uh, we'll definitely be doing some more recipes on the pellet grill as well. But puffer fish just look like a perfect little drumstick. So we got to fry them up. So we got our little, we got our little drumsticks going down here. Swimming yet again. I don't know if this is making you guys hungry, but I'm starving now. Man, see, two days into YouTube and you're talking like a YouTuber already. I can't. I got a good influencer right here. This guy's the real deal, man. You guys need to smash that subscribe button for real. Vic is the real deal. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Hold those little babies up. Look at those little things. They were, just, they were just swimming two hours ago. Just got done swimming in that hot oil. We got a little cornmeal action. Yeah, we're doing it two ways, you know what I mean? I don't fry everything all the time. I just conveniently happen to fry two things for for Victor, but hopefully you'll see me again and I'll show you some other stuff. This is a this is like, I mean, look at this though. I mean, what else would you do with this? I mean, it, it, it literally looks like a chicken leg. Mixed grain salad here. It's all a little fresh peaches. I chilled the rice. I mean, traditionally, obviously you would have hot rice, but with, with these nice crunchy grains and this uh, almost ripe peach, it's gonna go really, really well. We got some uh, some herbs from the garden in the back, and then I also have, it's actually from Sassafras, West Palm Beach. It's a little bit of uh, pickled fennel, pickled celery, mustard seed, just super, super fresh, you know what I mean? Like, I'm an acid guy, like a little bit of acid in, in pretty much everything that I cook, so. This is just like the perfect complement to the salad. I'm a big acid guy too. <laughs> Got those fresh herbs from the garden going in there. Which are comprised it's of? It's just a little parsley, a little flat leaf parsley and a little curly parsley. Just another element of just freshness, you know? Like I hate to be so repetitive with that word, but it just, it applies so well to this. And then we're gonna toss in a little bit of pickled celery and fennel. Mm, pickled. That smells so good, man. Then we're gonna take some of the juice and that's really what's kind of going to be your marinade and kind of bind everything together. Toss it up. I mean, it just looks artistic as hell. You got your nice colors in there. And then not to mention, it looks good and it's going to taste good. So. Oh my gosh, look at that. Oh, this is going to be so good. That cornmeal just adds another element of crunch to this, you know? Mm -hmm. Two different types of fry. And then like, who who doesn't like fried food, you know what I mean? Here we go. And once again, the fun part, you know what I mean? This is a this is something you do with your kids at home. You guys can play around with the plate. You really don't even have to have a vision for the plate. You kind of let it speak for itself, the food. We'll get a little, a little swirl right there. Just a little something, something like that. Kind of similar to what we did before. Kind of whatever design that your heart desires. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. A little grain salad with the fresh peaches. And once again, this is not this is not a hot plate right here. This is kind of all kind of chilled, room temperature. Obviously not the fish, but. And then two of these guys. Wow. Those are the, uh, the cornstarch and flour. And these are the cornmeal. The stars of the show. 
a little bit of Brooks parsley, a little bit of the pickle Fresno chilies that you guys saw me do before. Just gives a nice little color pop. And there's no method to this madness. You guys can kind of play it however you want. Look at all those colors. James, once again, killed it. Thank you for coming, dude. Thank you guys, it's a pleasure to be here. You guys are amazing to cook with, an amazing company, and I really appreciate it. Victor, how lucky are we, huh? Look at that. Lucky. We're all lucky. This is puffer fish, done about as good as it can be done. You just, oh my gosh, it's like a delicacy. They left the dorsal fins on, you can just bite the dorsal fins off. These little crispy tails, Oh, yeah. mm. Does it bring back childhood memories? Well, I've been eating puffer fish all my life, but I never ate them prepared this good. Th these puffer fish are probably the, the best puffer fish you could possibly eat. James, you, you did an incredible job, man. Thank you, guys. Incredible. I'm happy to cook for you guys. Incredible. <laughs> it blows my mind to think that we were catching these as kids and we'd throw them back because it wasn't a fish that we thought we wanted to eat, and it's amazing. Like, it's actually... Not only, only is it easy to eat like a chicken wing, it tastes phenomenal. Like, one of the better fish I've ever had in the fact that it comes out of like your backyard and all it takes is like a little hook and a piece of hot dog to catch probably, like, <laughs> it blows my mind. And the preparation is probably the best preparation I've ever had any meal. So like, it ties it in together amazing. Um, I'm, I can't say I'm speechless because I can't stop talking about it, but it's really good. <laughs> so Fisher said that when we used to catch these as little kids, we used to throw them back, but most of the time we did throw them back, but we always wanted to try everything like one time. We'd catch something and be like, can we eat this? Let's try it. And we always wanted to try new things, so we did eat them as kids maybe once or twice, but most of the time we always threw them away, like threw them back in, but so good, prepared wonderfully. And the rice salad, what would you call it? Grain salad. Grain salad was really good. Paired with the fried fish, excellent. Huge thank you for him to come here and cook for us. It's absolutely amazing and we're very appreciative of it, so thank you. Thank you guys. James, you gotta come sit down, man. I know. Yeah. You gotta, gotta come sit down. Just do, man. You stand, <laughs> stand, you stand and eat. A few people commented saying, why did you guys make James stand in the kitchen? That's, we didn't make him do anything. No, it was not him. That's, that's just him. I, I, Brooke and I get it when you're, or Brooke's mom gets it. When you're cooking for people, that's just what you do, you know? You want everyone else to enjoy. Thank you, sir. Um, a buddy of mine, Andrew Woolley, texted me saying, hey man, you should really be careful with, you know, promoting eating puffer fish, which I wanna reiterate. You have to make sure you clean them the precise way because there is a danger in eating them. We just ate 60, table full of nine people, we're all fine. I know that some people do express concern, so I will have all that link below on how to properly clean them and you guys saw how I did it. So just wanna get that out of the way. James. Killed it once again, man. Look at all these happy people on all these empty plates. Happy people. Pile of bones, <laughs> empty plates. So good. I mean, he just pays so much attention to detail. You could really tell he loves what he does. Like, this might just look like a little red chili, but he pickled it and it's just amazing. His little um, sweet pea puree, fantastic. And then in case you guys were wondering what it looks like as we didn't really show on video. So this is your puffer fish. You fry it up whole. You can leave the tails on, the dorsal fins on. Watch this. Tail crisps up. You can eat it. And then the meat, you just have one bone right in the middle. You can eat the meat right off. It's not annoying. If you guys wanna try this, I, I suggest it. It's really delicious. Thank you once again, and I'll catch you guys in that next one.